ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. No speaking wish. Tell me. Goodbye and good night. All two on bar. It's still real to me, damn it. Gummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. All three. The Moss Covers. Three handle family credential. Unchained.media presents the B Plus Podcast with your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin. It was me all along, Austin. Number four, Armbar. I will never retire. I still got 200. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the B Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Tuesday. You know what that means. It's time for a bonus episode. We don't normally come at you on Tuesday, but we are this week. We're sitting down to talk with Jamie Apps, who recently went over to Los Angeles for the Battle of Los Angeles weekend with PWG. Uh, He wasn't with PWG. He just went as a fan, obviously. So, Jamie, how are you? Not too bad. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. I want to talk about everything that happened for the weekend basically i mean how how was it how was i mean how are you are you dealing with all the jet lag and all that sort of stuff i was yesterday and the day before today i'm not too bad i feel all right today that's good that's good i've heard it can hit you pretty hard coming to and from america i i haven't done the america trip myself so i'm not sure but yeah the the flight over was okay but the flight back was the the killer one right Right. It's like, it's what is it, like a nine-hour flight? 14 and a half. Holy crap. That's even longer than I thought. See, I've only ever done, like, little Asia trips, you know? Yep. Like, I've been to the Philippines and stuff. Like, like I've never... Yeah. So, like, it, and, and it's always, like, a three-hour time difference, and it's, it's like, nothing, you know? It just means, like, you wake up a little earlier, and it's sweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, this was... I left at 10 a.m. Thursday morning, and I arrived at 6 a.m. Thursday morning. <laughs> That's so weird. So yeah, that that messed with my brain a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. That's I crazy. Forced myself to stay awake until eight p.m. and then I slept for twelve hours straight, and I was fine. Right. So you so you gave yourself enough time. You're smart. You didn't you didn't fly in the day before. Like you flew in a couple of days early. No, literally the day before Thursday morning. Okay, right. But the show's at night, so you can sleep for ages. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That yeah. makes sense. And so, how were the shows? How was it? Absolutely incredible. We all walked out of there and there was I was hanging out with three other Aussies there and we were all talking about heading straight back next year. Yeah, so this was your first bowler? Yep, first bowler, first PWG show and it's like a religious experience really. Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. I, I thought it would be a bit less that now that they're not in Reseda. Uh, yeah, I guess I've never experienced Reseda, so it's hard to tell yeah. the difference, but everybody in the crowd was so welcoming and the show was incredible. So I'm definitely keen to go back and having the air con in the uh, Globe Theatre <laughs> makes it very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have seen stuff on Twitter about how people are, are like, how did we ever love Reseda so much? <laughs> this place has air conditioning. So, you know, I think even the faithful are being converted, which is nice. So did you decide to go over because our Aussie boys were involved or were you already planning on heading over for this one? I've wanted to head to Bowler for a few years, but as soon as Robbie Eagles and then the subsequent three Aussies were announced, I was I was all in straight away. Yeah. I, I actually booked my flights before I even got tickets to the show. That's risky. It was, but I figured with it being in the globe, I had a chance. And uh, yeah. there was, there's always tickets available on the day for people that couldn't make it for some unknown reason. 
Right. So you've you made it to all three nights? Yep. Just general admission all three nights, but I was third row every night. That's insane. Those yeah. are those are some good seats. Yep. Friday and Saturday night, doors opened at six. Okay. I was in line both days at two PM. Okay, and that's how you ended up in third row. Yep. And then on yep. Sunday doors opened at five. I was in line at ten AM. All right, cool. So by now, by now, everyone's seen the results. We all know how our Aussies went. We all know that Jeff Cobb came out the eventual winner. Uh, I, I guess the first question I want to talk about the Aussies for sure, because we're we, we do a big focus on Aussie graps here. So Adam Brooks, uh, Jonah Rock, and Robbie Eagles, of course, all participated in this year's bowler. Uh, Jonah Rock and Robbie Eagles made it to the second round. Adam Brooks was eliminated in the first round by Ray Horace. How did they go? Like, how did the, what was the general vibe? in the crowd towards the Aussies? Uh, Robbie was super over with everyone. Jonah had a bit of a mixed reaction, but eventually he got the crowd on his side. And Adams was tough. I think because he was the opening night and the, the opening match on the, the entire weekend, it was the crowd hadn't sort of got into it yet, but right. he managed towards the end of his match to get everybody involved. Right. So Jonah Rock works a bit more he Jonah Rock works a heel character with PWG, right? Yes. Yeah. And so when you say he got people on board, like he, he got people like jeering him, not cheering him. Yes, he did the uh Roman Reigns Superman punch <laughs> power yeah. up in the corner and got booed out of the building. Yeah, well that's that, gonna work. That's gonna of, work with a PWG crowd. One of the loudest reactions of the weekend, I think. That's amazing. That's amazing. So what were your highlights other than seeing the Aussie boys Aussie boys play? What were what were the highlights? Uh the tag match main event on the opening night was incredible, hard hitting. Ilya Dragonov uh stood out to everybody. No a lot of people hadn't heard of him before. He became a fan favorite straight away. Mm-hmm. Uh Walter versus Timothy Thatcher on the second night. One of the most brutal matches I've ever seen, if not the most brutal match. And then the the Lucha Bros on night three, just insanity. Third row, I was running for my life majority of that match. <laughs> so it, that was Lucha Brothers versus the Rascals, yeah, for the tag titles. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz are both really good as well. They're like uh, dangerously underrated, I think. In For the, sure. like, yeah, and, and uh, going up against the Lucha Brothers, that's amazing. Uh, those guys never put on a bad match, you know, no. Penta and Phoenix. But uh, Ring Camp, I guess, uh, kind of the Steelers of the weekend, Timothy Thatcher and Walter. From the sounds of things, everything I've heard, every time those guys came out, like it was, it was insane. Yeah, yeah, massive pop for them every time they came out and. You always knew their match was going to be a brutal fight. And, yeah, everybody bought into the, the toughness of their matches. Right. How did how did people find Shingo? Because this is one of Shingo's first sort of forays outside of Japan. Uh, yeah. The first, not, the first match he had in the tag, the crowd was a little bit soft on him to begin with, but once he started sort of going toe to toe with Walter and Thatcher, yeah. I think everybody was yeah bought in straight away. And then his match against Robbie was phenomenal. Yeah, I actually heard some people on Twitter and whatnot call that match of the weekend. Yep, yeah. Towards the end, the crowd was fully invested and thought both guys could could pull the victory out there. Yeah, I was really hoping that we'd get Robbie versus Jonah. Like when they both made it through the first round, I'm like, oh, they're in the same bracket. Maybe they'll maybe they'll end up facing off against each other. I'm disappointed that that didn't play out. But Robbie versus Shingo sounds like it'll be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely one to look out for once the DVDs hit. Yeah, Jonah versus Walter was a short one though. Yeah, it was relatively short, but it was yeah kicked off. Jonah kicked it off attacking Walter before he even got in the ring. Okay. So then they took it out into the crowd straight away and everybody was sort of panicking, trying to scurry away from them. <laughs> Those are two big boys. Yep. And then that's when Jonah hit the, the Roman Reigns stuff and everybody just lost it. Right. Right. So we should we should probably we could probably be looking forward to listeners, Walter's coming down here for World Series Wrestling. Yep. And Jonah Rock 
is a staple of World Series wrestling. So we're probably going to see these two tie up again here in Australia on our shores. There's not many tickets left. So get to worldserieswrestling.com to check that one out. Because those two, I, I can only imagine uh, the sounds when those two pummel into each other. <laughs> yeah, the, the chops in those matches are going to be crazy. And I wouldn't want to miss those. Yeah, you've seen the photo, right, of Walter with his... <laughs> and he's literally ripping the dude's heart out pretty much. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think um, he, he hit a chop on the weekend that was probably the loudest chop I've ever heard. Well, because his chops aren't like the stinging kind of, you know, crack sound. It's like a thud. Yeah, it's a really loud, hard thud noise. Yeah, like that That had to crack a rib. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think if he hit me, I'd probably collapse my lung or have a heart attack yeah just implode just (laughs) completely implode into a pile of dust yep yeah it's pretty insane uh so okay i guess a couple more questions who was the absolute standout for you for you personally who was like maybe someone you didn't realize coming in or or whatever but just stole the weekend for you uh Ilya dragunov for sure i hadn't hadn't heard a lot of him at all but his intensity in everything he did was phenomenal like I, I couldn't speak highly enough of him. If if you get the chance, check out some of his stuff online. And, yeah, uh, definitely. So he Puma King his, was really good too. Puma King? I'm not familiar yeah. with Puma King, but Ilya Dragunov has a huge match coming up at Wembley with Pete Dunne. Oh, yes. So if anyone, if anyone watches Progress, that'll be one to watch. It's on September 30th, I want to say. Uh, it's like their biggest show ever, and Pete Dunne's uh, fighting Ilya Dragunov. That's going to be insane. Yep, that's definitely one to look forward to. Yeah, WXW are putting out a lot of really good talent <laughs> at the moment. Uh, yeah. So that's the German promotion that Walter comes from as well. Yeah, I think with Walter as their trainer, there's going to be some really underrated talents coming out of there in the next couple of years. Yeah. Did you did you happen to catch William Regal around? I know he was he was backstage. <laughs> we did spot him on the second night. We were sitting to the side, and we could see sort of a little bit backstage, and we did see him peeking through the curtain a little bit. So he's sort of just having a having a squeeze, checking yep. out the talent. Yeah, checking out a few guys. Yeah, apparently he's in. A, apparently WWE. Sorry, I shouldn't say he, but apparently WWE after Bowler are interested in Brody King, which is really cool. Oh, that's yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I'd yeah, Bro- Brody King's a badass. Yeah, yeah, his match with PCO was interesting, to say the least. Oh, yeah, let's talk about PCO. Didn't he, like, almost die pretty much every night? Yeah, pretty much. The first match, <laughs> I, I think I was worried for his life nearly the whole match. <laughs> he did a moonsault from the corner whilst Brody King was laying. His legs were in the ring. His torso was on the apron. And PCO went for a moonsault from the corner. And I'm not sure where he was aiming, but he landed on the top rope and then flipped off the rope to the floor. Oh. Yeah. So like so he was so he's on the top, and then you've got Brody King laying head under the ropes on the apron. Yes. Like head and head and body, and then legs in the ring. So he was trying to hit the torso, you would assume. I would assume, but the way he was <laughs> he was standing as if he was just doing a normal moonsault into the ring. Okay. So he kind of had to flip and twist at the same time. And, yeah, it didn't go too well. Oh, and, I can't wait to see it on DVD. And then when he, train wreck. when he finally did hit a normal moonsault into the ring, he almost landed on the top of his head. That's insane. Like Brock Lesnar style? Uh, yeah, pr- pretty much <laughs> exactly like that. I think there might have been... <laughs> Two or three centimeters gap. Wow, but he was all right because he wrestled the next night. Ah, uh, no, he wrestled night three. Night three, night three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was fine, but there was a lot of s- scary moments in the the opening match. Yeah, that's insane. Because I don't know PCO. I like PCO. I think he he's the character work with the whole Frankenstein gimmick is amazing. But like the dedication, he actually got cut open and got that scar. For that whole battery bit, yep, which, which is insane. But yeah, his, his character's awesome, but watching his matches, it's kind of scary. Yeah, just stop trying to kill yourself. I don't think you need to do that. Yep. Yeah, you've, <laughs> but, got, you've you know. got the character. Just play the character, and everybody will enjoy it. You don't need to almost <laughs> die every match. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you would recommend 
for people to get out and check out PWG Battle of Los Angeles Live? Like, make the trip. Is it worth it? Because obviously a lot of people go over and do the Mania thing, right? Yep. Have you done Mania Weekend before? No, I've done SummerSlam before, but no, not Mania. All right. So in, in terms of the big WWE Weekend or the big PWG Weekend, which 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 would you recommend people do more? Uh, I enjoyed Bowler Weekend a lot more just because of the, the people there were incredible. I spent a lot of my days hanging out with – the Australians and other people in the line, everybody's super welcoming. Once you get your spot in the line and people know where you are, they'll hold your spot. So we could go into the – there was a pub next door. A lot of us went in there, watched the NFL, had some lunch, then went back into the line later in the afternoon. Right. So we didn't have to sit And, and people didn't care that you'd, you'd left and come back. So it wasn't like lining up at the Apple store. No. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> yeah. have – once you were there, you could leave. You didn't have to sit in the one spot for six hours. That's amazing. That's something I love about wrestling fans is is how – like wrestling fans sometimes, most of the time, wrestling fandom really feels like a, a brotherhood as much as wrestling itself is. Yep. Yeah, everyone in there was super welcoming. Lots of the Americans were like, oh, tell us about the Australian guys. Tell us about the Australian scene. So I spent a lot of my days just talking about PWA, MCW. It was awesome. That's awesome. That's heaps good. That's heaps good. We need to get more eyes on it, man, because I think we're about to explode too, With especially with guys like Robbie, Jonah, and Brooksy going overseas and, and tearing things up the way they have. We've got a lot of guys in the UK at the moment, like Kyle Fletcher, Mark Davis, you know, Charlie Evans over there as well. But I don't know. I, I just think we're about to explode. And so any chance you have to sort of spread the word, it, it makes us sound almost like religious zealots. <laughs> It does make us sound like a bit of a cult, but yeah, we've also got Mick Moretti over in Chikara and he was at PWG on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I saw him posting pics from the crowd. Yep. Hashtag now we conquer. Yes. Let's let's hope it continues next year with, we had three this year. Let's see how many we can get next year. Yeah. I'll oh, forget about next year, man. I want it to continue this year. I want, uh, what else is coming up? We got, we got World Tag League around the corner. Let's get Aussie Open and World Tag League over in New Japan. Let's get. You know, let's seriously, like, take this now we conquer thing seriously. Let's get Aussies everywhere. We need to be tweeting every company. We need to be telling them, book these guys, you know, because we've got, we've got untapped people here. Like, the Velocities could fit on Junior Tag League. Easy. Yeah, yeah for sure. You know, like, they're ready for it, too. So, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, we, we, we need to, I think Australian wrestling fans need to start tweet campaigns. We need to, like, organize some shit. Yeah, I know last year when uh, the... Robbie for best of super juniors hashtag popped up. Yeah. There was a lot of people jumped on that one. So I think if we jump on the now we conquer bandwagon, we can get something happening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, rally around that now we conquer stuff because it's fantastic. And Mick Moretti is an absolute legend too. So, yep. Yeah. So he just earned a title match in Chikara. So, yeah. I, I haven't, I didn't wake up early enough to watch this morning. I was up all night last night. I was catching up on uh, MCW Fight to Survive. Yep. and EPW at the Dean. So I didn't I didn't watch the Chikara one this morning, but I have Chikara Topia, so that's next on my list to watch. So he, he won his match. Yeah, he tweeted that he has enough points to go for a title match now, so... Fantastic. Hopefully That's soon. exciting. That's very exciting. I would love to see Mick Moretti as, uh, as Chikara Grand Champion. Yep, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right, well, I, I guess that, that does it really for Bowl. Is there anything else you wanted to tell the people? Uh, I guess just check me out on... Twitter, it's at apsy underscore jam, A P P S Y underscore J A M. And I publish a magazine every two months with interviews with all sorts of different creative people. So check it out. Yeah, including wrestlers. Yep, yep. I've spoken yep. to Cody Rhodes. I've got Chris Jericho coming up in November. So that's probably the best one to check out. Yeah, absolutely. And and so that's available through Patreon and all that sort of stuff as well? Yep, it's patreon.com forward slash Jamie Apps Media. Awesome. And as well, I just want to shout out the work you do on Fire Pro Wrestling World. Ah, yes. Yes. I'm- You're doing us all a service. You're making making all the, uh, all the like you've made the PWG3, you made the Chikara Trios, right? Yep. So uh, it's exciting. Yep, I'm hoping to continue next on the list is the MCW roster. So let's see how many yes. of those guys I can make. Lover boy, son. That's a good one. I I promise to never do that again. 
<laughs> that was bad. And of course, people, you can find me at Greg Unchained on Twitter at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We are known as the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Hit the like button, hit the share button, hit subscribe, leave us a five star review if you feel so inclined. And thank you so much for listening to this bonus episode. Peace out. Bye. Hold one. Arm drag. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh my God. So, no speak English. Dummy. Yeah. Goodbye and good night. Hold two. This is the worst town I've ever been in. It's still real to me, damn it! Coming. <laughs>